San Francisco. It's The Cube. Here's your host, John Furrier. Hey, hello, I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE, The Cube. We are on the ground in Silicon Valley at Mintigo's corporate headquarters. I'm here with the co-founder, Al Segalov who is the chief brains behind the operation, chief scientist, chief operator, right-hand man to uh, Jacob and John Barra. Welcome to the conversation. Thank you. So, um, you know, we've had a couple of chats before, been in the office a few times, really impressed with Mintigo. Jacob kind of cleared up kind of the product, the positioning, but there's a lot of science behind it. And, and what we're seeing in the market right now that we're documenting on theCUBE is there are industries being disrupted every day, but now you're seeing this sequence where the cloud mobile is really disrupting markets that are waiting to be trusted. Advertising has been one, and now sales. This is where the money is, right? The money, you know, go with the people. People rob banks because there's money in there. That's what Steve Harris told us on the Cube. Is the great line. Sales is where the money is. So people are really looking at using big data and technology to optimize that. So a lot of people are new to this. So what's your take? How would you explain to those newbies out there who are been you know sales managers or executives who just want to get more sales, get the funnel filled? What's the science behind this new generation? Yeah, so you're, you're absolutely right. So uh, the world in many aspects is changing towards a much more data-driven approach. And uh, uh, I can actually quote uh, uh, the CMO of one of our customers, uh, Lisa from Newstar, uh, who, who termed this as uh, 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 the move from uh, madmen to mathmen. Uh, mathmen today solve many problems that you used to require domain experts to do. So today, using the exact same statistical machine learning methods, you can uh, you can predict whether a person is going to have an epilepsy uh, attack. You can find whether a uh, particle uh, interaction actually contains the Higgs boson. Uh, you can predict who's going to click on an uh, online coupon. And you can also predict in B2B who would be the best buyer out there in your funnel and why. Um, and, and this transformation has basically completely disrupted any industry it's been through. So why now, though? I mean, it sounds like it sounds kind of like sci-fi to me, which I, you know, I mean, I, I get it, but like folks out there might sound sci-fi, but why now? What's different now? Is, is it the cloud? Is it the unlimited compute available? Is it the access to data? What's different now than say five to seven years ago? So first of all, all of the, all of the <laughs> above. Um, this has happened in marketing in B2C prior to happening in B2B. So look at Amazon. Uh, just a couple of days ago, I told and asked everyone in the company uh, who recognized this website and it was Amazon in 1993. Uh, totally different, of course. Um, and uh, what's happening now in B2C, in B2B is what's happened to B2C before, which is uh, an abundance of data flowing in. Now in, in B2B marketing, the data is a bit different. Unlike B2C where many, much of the data is internal to the company, like you know, what kind of browsing you did and what purchases did you make in the past. Uh, in B2B, it's all about finding all those signals outside of your premises. So more than 70% of the research people do is not done on your website. And, and the signals they, they do uh, to show that and to show they, they have a fit or a need uh, are outside your realm. So you need to bring in, put in all that data, and now this data is suddenly available to marketers, and they also have the compute power to analyze it and, and to make a, a meaningful deduction from it. So is there a distinction between B2B and B2C? You brought, you brought that up. I mean, I can see some obvious ones, but is there some other differences? Yeah. Um, so in, in uh, B2C, you don't have the company entity. Right, so each each one of us is a separate consumer, and, and we buy completely separately. Unlike B2B, where the the company uh, uh, membership is something of uh, huge importance, of course, and you can combine signals from uh, different uh, uh, entities or people in that company. Uh, we we buy when we're in the B2B context, we buy both as a company and as a person. You must combine these two together. Unlike B2B. so, it's like a mesh network then, in a way, um, the data kind of can flow back and forth. Yeah, yeah, you, you do, uh, you kind of transfer data from the company entity to the person and you know, vice versa. So I got to ask you the question about the other competition out there. I don't want you to name names, but, but you know, from my standpoint, I, I cover this area. There's a lot of snake oil out there. People saying, oh, I'm doing social sales, and people try to bring it in the house. And it's almost a head fake, if you will. But, but what's different about Mintigo? What are you guys doing specifically for technology that makes it uh, a relevant product right now? Because a lot of the buyers are you know, smart, savvy CMOs, and they have to operationalize this new concept. So they're a little nervous. So what can you say why Mintigo is so powerful? So I think for two reasons. Number one is Mintigo was built from the ground up for marketers. 
we never sold to sales or to operations or to IT or to any other kind of buyer. We only concentrate and focus on marketing and our products are aimed at that. So our products allow uh, marketers to do additional things that they need to get done, which uh, what customers' feedback tells us is that we're the only ones that do. Number two is Mintigo was built from the ground up on the data. Uh, so like I told you before, data is key, and, and data is really the shift that's happened in the world out there that caused this technology to emerge. Um, we have, I believe, the best data in the market, and we were the first ones that started collecting the, the marketing relevant data. So talk about the, the data strategy. A lot of people don't wake up in the morning in, in this 2014, and they probably didn't have data science in their mind from a marketing standpoint. Certainly other verticals you know, are moving fast in the data, finance, oil and gas, and a bunch of other ones, but now marketing, we saw Oracle, we saw Salesforce have their big events, and it seems to be hot right now for data-driven marketing. What does that mean in your mind? I mean, explain to us what that means. So I'll tell you what it yeah. looks like from the position of the marketer yeah. that, that needs to buy from Integral. Uh What we do is we, we go into an account and we discover this poor guy sitting in the corner. He has an engineering degree, but he's in marketing, and the poor guy has to work with Excel. Um, and, you know, he barely has any data he can even get there his hands on, and what he does get his hands on is is mostly uh, dirty. Um, so uh, that, that's why he's getting his hands dirty with bad data. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. he's starved. He needs some yeah. He needs data. He's mm -hmm. data starved at that. Yeah. Point. We we have a customer a couple of days ago. He came from a consulting company and he said, you know, I came to this big company to work as uh, uh, senior director of demand gen. And the first thing I asked is, great, where's the data? And people looked at each other and said, uh, what data? Uh, what so do I that, need? Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's the kind of. So uh, you guys come in. You and what do you do next? So first thing we do is we discover the data needs of the company. So what makes uh, uh, a prospect buy from us? Why do people really buy from us? Right? People don't buy from us because they're in California and in uh, IT industry. People buy from us because they have a real need in marketing. They're spending a lot of money on marketing, they're using advanced tools, and they're not getting the results. Um, as an anecdote, people that ha have uh, engineering degrees in marketing are more likely to buy from Intego than people that don't. Than don't. So you guys get a lot of technical customers that like you guys when you guys are kind of a geek solution. Not only, not only. Okay. We also have we also have customers that sell uh, tax related uh, mm -hmm. solutions and and you know all kinds of things and this, this is really applicable to a very wide uh, audience. Okay, so I got to ask you, what's the secret sauce? Tell us the secret. <laughs> what's the secret <laughs> algorithm? Is there secret algorithms? I know the board over there, you know, written in, in secret Hebrew. I mean, what's going on here? Come on, tell us. What's the secret sauce? So uh, there's not one piece of it that's the secret sauce. It's a combination of three things. Number one is uh, the integrations. So being able to pull data in from all kinds of different sources in our customers' uh, uh, systems. Number two is the database that Mintigo is constructing and, and that contains very rich and very granular information about each and every company. Right? Telling you someone is using a database isn't going to do you much good, but if I can tell you they're using MySQL, Oracle, uh, version something, that's, that's something you can actually go to work with. Uh, so that's number two. And number three is the capability to match all that together and to do smart uh, uh, machine learning statistical based analysis on that data set. So what's the theory behind this? I mean, we always joke, I always talk to John Bear, the president, and Jacob about network theory, social media, connected devices, humans are internet of things, I guess humans are connected to. Uh, the data's out there, it's all flowing. Is there like a thesis that you have technically? Is it network theory? Is it surveillance? Is it, you know, a lot of that kind of, you know, Jacob mentioned, you know, focusing on the good aspects, the good, the good suspects, if you will. What's the, the philosophy? Is there a thesis you can draw from that you can relate to that's... Uh, science behind it? Well, I, I wouldn't say there's a one sort of a bullet that tends to work each and every time. You know, you basically need a wide variety of data sources and data types in your system, and different things work for different customers. It's not it, it's not the same solution each and every time. And, uh, in some cases, you find that uh, a specific behavioral thing on their website is very important. In other cases, you may find some uh, hiring that the company is right now conducting is very important, and the third one, it's a, it's a system they're using. So it's not... So you guys do a lot of automation. It feels just plug data in and it just kind of runs? Is it, <laughs> is it that simple? It's definitely that simple. And that's our goal. Actually, we encourage our customers to do that multiple times. And our, our thesis is you don't just need one, one specific model in order to build your uh, marketing. You need multiple ones. So i got to ask you the question, who are you disrupting? Every good technology is disrupting something. Uh, I know you guys have a, an efficient model, get rid of the noise, which is our model, get the signal from the noise, which we do at the Cube, which we're doing here. 
But when you get down to when you were actually going into the data and algorithmically cleaning it up and getting it more focused, that's going to, someone's going to lose on there. Someone's going to win, which you guys, who loses? Who do you guys disrupt technically? If you had the points of view of it. Well, um, I wouldn't say there's one point where we're disrupting right now, right? Uh, I mean, the usual suspect is the marketing automation, which we're taking to the next level. Uh, but we're actually coexisting very well with those systems. I think we're allowing our marketers to do things they weren't able to do before. They're, we're allowing them to gain much better insights into their uh, funnel, to focus on... It's a very political problems. answer. You really didn't say anyone. <laughs> it all could be working with you. No, but I mean, uh, we were talking, joking, with, you know, the old way and new way, we're going to a new way. So if you, if the, if you argue that we're going to the new way, I would say that doesn't the marketing automation definition change? So if your marketing automation solution is doing something today, it's probably automating the wrong things, or it needs to automate new things. How do you look at that technically? Because there's new ways of doing things and you're automating them. So do customers get that, or, or is that just something that you guys just kind of roll into the product? It's early, right? So early adopters get it. Uh, mass market, I wouldn't say that's where they're at. They're, they're kind of uh, you know, let me first start at kindergarten, and then talk to me about high school. Uh, yeah, take them through the progression, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, there's a, a, a an analogy in, in uh, uh, evolution, right? In evolution, every step of the way must be uh, self-sufficient; otherwise, you wouldn't be able to reach the end result. So, only the, the really techy, savvy, advanced uh, marketers do the leap in one step, but the rest of them take the so I got to ask you the same question I asked Jacob. So why did you guys start Mintigo? What was the what was the passion? You guys are co-founders, obviously. You know, you know, uh, yin and yang on the startup here. You guys are partners um, as partners. Where'd you get the idea from? Are you sipping coffee in the cafe um, and you say, "Hey, let's go disrupt uh, sales and marketing," or was it well, what what itch were you guys scratching that gave you the passion to start Mintigo? So both Jacob and me and most of the core team of Mintigo, we have uh, many years of experience in uh, big data analytics and finding. Uh, unique patterns in huge uh, sets of data. Um, and what we did is we thought about where can this kind of solution apply to a real problem that no one is solving. And that's when we started meeting this poor guy with the Excel in the corner of the marketing department. Uh, and that was pretty unique because most other uh, departments had their emerging big data solutions, but marketing did not. And frankly, marketing's uh, problem is also much tougher than problems you encounter in other areas. Uh, right, they, they deal with millions of records, knowing very little about them, and with uh, very uh, few tools to, to handle. Uh, that's why we saw the match. Right. Because so you having fun? Definitely. Having a lot of fun. So yeah, it's yeah. a good problem I'm, to solve. I'm in for the ride. I mean, it's you got a lot of sexy <laughs> marketing angles there to solve, but it's also a technical science thing mm -hmm. too as well. Yeah. I mean, they need the solution. Marketing seems to be in need. Yeah, and the, the feedback we're getting is, is amazing. I mean, hearing customers talk uh, and, and telling us about. You know how uh, uh, how the problems we're tackling are important to them. That that's that's great. Paul, great to chat with you here on the ground with Cube. Appreciate it. Uh, you guys are going to be a big company. I have a good feeling about you guys. I really like what you're doing. And I think you're bringing the science. The art is already out there uh, in sales. Certainly, you know, finding the good suspects, as they say, is is, is, is now a science. You guys are doing some good work. I'm John Furrier with Silicon Angle the Cube. We're on the ground, Silicon Valley here at Mintigo headquarters. Thanks for watching.